When most people think about DJing, they think of sound, but the way DJs find, understand and perform their music is visual. Waveforms, reading a playlist or even the colour of a volume meter. We use our eyes to play our sets just as much as our ears. If your library is painful to look at, your sets will suffer. There are a few simple tips you can use to make your playlist faster to browse, easier to create and more flexible. And turn your library from this into this. Today I'm going to show you ways to use nothing to create better structured playlists. How to hire Marie Kondo to avoid anxiety and panic when you use record box. And ways to master energy control with an ancient artist technique. Nothing is everywhere. A dramatic pause in a movie. A space between paragraphs. The dead silence after I tell a joke. Even though it's not really there, it still tells you something. It signals change. And DJ sets are full of change, unless it's tech too soon. Different parts of the night, different crowds, different energy. The problem with playlists is they're just one big long list of text. There's no context to show you how one track relates to another. It can be hard to identify the pivot points where your set changes direction or where there's different groupings of tracks that fit together. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way we could use nothing to help understand our playlists? Yeah, it would. Recordbox doesn't let you do this out of the box. I know, hold back your shock. But I'm going to share a trick I learned from top drum and bass DJ AMC. To do this, you're going to need a blank audio file. I've got one you can download in the description. You can use this blank file like a separator in your playlist. Drag a few copies in and then put it between groups of tracks. There's a few ways I like to use this. The first is to break up different sections of my set. For example, I might have a liquid section going into some rollers and then finishing with some neuro. I also have a special double drop playlist. This is where I keep tracks that I know double drop well together. And Finally, I use it to create mini sets. These are groups of something like four or five different tracks that you know work well as a sequence. They're really useful to dip into if you get stuck for what to play. Separators also really help readability of your playlist on the tiny Tamagotchi screens of most CDJs. When I shared this on the newsletter, one of the readers had a really great tip. Choose your favorite banger, blank out the name and title in the tags, and then use that track as your separator. Then you've always got emergency access to it in every playlist. You can even play it before your set so it turns green and stands out even more. Genius. If you haven't heard of Marie Kondo, she became famous for helping people tidy up and organize their homes. And I think she was relevant like 10 years ago. She came up with a method called Con Marie. There's a few parts to it, but it's basically about getting rid of stuff that doesn't add value or bring you joy. Let's play a game. Have a look and see what your most played track is in your library. Imagine you're playing that track now to a packed dance floor. Then take a look at this list here. Which three of these options are most important for you to make a decision on what track to play next? And you can only choose three. Make a note, we'll come back to this in a second. Opening record box used to fill me with anxiety. There was text everywhere. It was information overload. One of the best ways to make our library faster and easier to use is to Mary Condo it and hide the stuff we don't need. Remember those three options you chose? I know attention spans are short these days, but it's literally 20 seconds ago. Come on, right click on the column headings. I want you to hide every column except the three you chose. For me, it would be energy, key and title. The next time you mix, try using only those three columns to select your tracks. I know it sounds brutal and you might have a bead of sweat running down your butt crack, but bear with me. By doing this, you'll start to understand some really interesting things about your DJing. By limiting your options, you can explore your decision-making process. Are there any other columns you need to mix effectively? Can you discover new ways to put your sets together creatively when you're presented with fewer options? And are there any columns you relied on as a beginner DJ that maybe you don't need anymore? Your library should grow and change change as you do. What's important and useful to you now might not be the same in a year, so make sure to regularly review your layout and make sure you're only showing things that you actually need to use. By default, the text size in Recordbox is only visible to atoms. Now we've taken an axe to some of the information we don't need in Recordbox, we can enhance the visibility of our playlist even further. Click on the cog to go into preferences, make sure you're in view, and here you can change the font size and the line height to make things easier to read. The one I find most useful is the bold setting. It makes it a bit easier to see my tracks from a distance. Recordbox also has a built-in large track view. Above your tracks, you'll see these two icons here. You can use these to toggle between the large and the small view. The cool thing is you can customize what column headings you see in each view. For example, in the small view, I could hide the waveform and have a massive one in the large view. Color 
is everywhere. It plays a massive role in our lives, affecting our perceptions, moods, and psychology. It's also a really powerful communication tool. Our brains use color as a shorthand to recognize objects, signals, and information. Yellow and black means your picnic's about to get ruined. Green means it's probably gonna taste horrible. And blue, dabba dee, dabba die. Artists have been hacking color for hundreds of years, using it to communicate emotions, themes, or ideas. Rekordbox allows you to tag your tracks by color. You can do this by selecting a track, clicking the info icon on the right, selecting the info tab, scrolling to the bottom and choosing a colour. DJs can use colour to help give even more information about our tracks. If you've been watching this channel a while, you'll know I use the rating field for energy. One star for low, five for high. It's definitely more visual than a tag, but it's still quite hard to scan through when you're quickly looking for your next track. All the stars are white, and I don't like to count. I wanted to add an even more visual way of understanding the energy in my tracks so that I could select them faster in the moment. I'm gonna set up three groups based on a traffic light system. I want my most chill tracks to be green, my medium to high energy tracks to be orange, and my highest energy tracks to be red. The idea is this will quickly get me in the right rough area and then I can use the stars to further refine down. The fastest way to set this up is to use some intelligent playlists. I'm going to create three intelligent playlists, one for each traffic light color. To do this, right click on playlists, select create new intelligent playlist. I'm going to call this one low energy. In the first drop down, select rating. Because I want to include both one and two star tracks in this playlist, I'm going to change the second drop down to is in the range. I can then select one to two stars. Click OK. Playlist will populate with all our one and two star tracks. To add our traffic light to these tracks, select them all by pressing Command and A on a Mac and Control and A on Windows. Go into the Track Info icon under the Info tab and we'll apply the green colour. Now I'm going to set up another intelligent playlist for our medium to high energy tracks which are 3 and 4 stars. I do this in the same way by creating a new intelligent playlist. I'll call this medium to high energy. Choose rating again in the first drop down, is in the range, and select 3 to 4 stars. I'm going to tag all of these as orange. Now I just need to create the final playlist which captures all our 5 star tracks. Because we're only looking at 5 star tracks, we can leave the second drop down as equals this time. And I'm going to tag these all as red. If you don't see the colour tag when you've added this, just right click on the column heading and make sure colour is selected. Okay, that's pretty cool, but there's a few things we can do to make it even easier to use. First, I like to rename the colours so I can remember what they actually mean. Go into Preferences, Advanced, Browse, and double click on the colours you want to rename. I'm going to rename green to low energy. Orange I'll call medium to high, and red will be face melter. If we have a look at our playlist here, we can see we've now got a really clear visual way of seeing what energy the tracks are, but I don't want to read even more text. I like to resize this column so only the dot is showing. This makes it so much easier to scan through. But there's no point spending time doing any of this if your library is full of tracks you never play, a terrible quality and aren't organised. If you're just starting out or your library needs a serious spring clean, you should watch this video next where I show you how I rebuilt my entire library from scratch using a simple five-step system.